Welcome, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for the Appraisal Buzzcast. If you aren't already subscribed, please take just a second and click the subscribe button so you make sure to get notified of our latest Buzzcast every week. Today, we'll be discussing technology for appraisers and some of the changes that happened this year with the pandemic and what changes for technology are on the horizon. I'm Jim Morrison, and we'll be speaking with Joan Trice, CEO and founder of Altera Group, and Jeff Bradford of Bradford Technologies. Joan, I'll hand it over to you. Thank you, Jim, and welcome, Jeff. And for the audience, for those of you who don't know, uh, Jeff and I have been friends for a very long time, and there's probably nothing we're going to chat about today that we haven't chatted on a Sunday afternoon just about the meaning of life and everything else that surrounds us, especially in this crazy last year. So, Jeff, I don't even know where to start. You know, you upset me the other day because you said uh, after every time we talk, you, you're you depressed. Um, <laughs> so hopefully, hopefully we won't depress our audience because I think there's nothing but positive things in the future for uh, appraisers. And I, I truthfully, I, I know you feel the same. So let's talk about even though it's been a rough year for co you know because of covid let's talk about some of the cool things that have actually transpired because of covid like inspection tools and and such sure and and let me just say that you know when we talk sometimes it does get to be there's so much stuff going on that it gets depressing sometimes but uh, as I've told uh, quite a few people, actually in the last couple of months or last weeks, this is actually a very exciting time to be in the appraisal business. There's so much going on. There's so much potential for change. There's just so much opportunity out there that people just need to open their eyes, think about some things, see how they're going to take advantage of the changes. There's definitely changes coming. And the virus has caused uh, an acceleration in these changes, right? And so you start looking at how the workforce is going to change. You start looking at how specialization is going to change. You know, just look at all, all the tools that are coming out to help people collaborate. You know, I had a knee surgery earlier this year, and most of my doctor calls were on a video conference, right? So getting, and you know, it all comes back to, and we've been talking about this forever, but it's the distance and time factors. They're just getting smaller and smaller and smaller. And that interaction, even though the really we're really separated, that interaction is is becoming like we're next to each other, right? We can collaborate, we can talk, we can draw on a board. People can see what we're doing, and so uh, when we start think, to think about inspections, we start to think about how do those trends, how are those how are those trends going to impact inspections. And so they're going to change, right? I think uh, the, the COVID things brought in the ability for the homeowner to come into the picture a little bit. And I think the cat's out of the bag and it's not going to go back in. So there's probably going to be a place for the homeowner to participate in that data collection process uh, for certain types of uh, valuations. I think, uh, you know, the idea of virtual inspections have come in into play. And so that's not going to go away. And, and then things like, you know, how do you measure the home? Well, there's people out there that are uh, now starting to rely on, you know, taking photos on the outside, like a hover and give you dimensions uh, all around the house. Uh, there's a uh, drone technology that's taking dimensions. And then you have probably with the virtual inspections, you'll have uh, the ability to look at video and extract out using uh, image recognition, extract out maybe even condition and quality, uh, but definitely here's some characteristics about the property. So it, there's, there's just a great, it's a great time to be in this industry because uh, it's wide open, wide open for change, wide open for opportunity. Uh, I couldn't agree with you more. So let's talk about actually one of my favorite topics and you know, I, I, I know that it scares appraisers a little bit, and that's artificial intelligence and machine learning. So as you talk about it, Jeff, make sure you define like what the, 
let's actually, that's a good starting place. Let's talk about what's the difference between AI and machine learning. Is, is machine learning just a subset of AI? Is that how the appropriate way to look at it? It is. And, and then there's another subset of that called deep learning. And so, you know, uh, AI started back in the 50s, but it wasn't until probably 2012 where uh, with the advent of deep learning came into play. And deep learning is, uh, is a technology where you can actually train the system to recognize things. And we've all seen, you know, you, you can recognize a dog and a cat and those kinds of things, right? So, and, and that was probably five years ago, that was like the big thing. And self-driving cars and all this stuff started to come into play and recognizing somebody walking across the street. But now it's getting down to, to us. It's getting down to the appraiser level. It's getting down to the everyday level. It's not just this high level kind of wishful thing anymore. And so it's, gonna, it's definitely going to play a, a place. It's going to have a place in, in risk management, I think, more than anything. It might have it in valuation, but uh, being able to take images, video, uh, high resolution pictures of a home, run them through an image recognition, deep learning uh, system, it's gonna be able to extract out condition, quality. Uh, I think uh, in the insurance industry, this is big for roof. It's gonna be able to do all of these things. And there's companies already specializing in this kind of thing. My concern with it is that, is it gonna be biased? And we've heard about AI systems being biased already because they were trained with an inherent bias to them. And so we think of, a, we think of the computer system as being uh, agnostic, right? Right. But, but deep learning is not, it was trained. Well, save that thought and we're, let's come back uh, to that in a minute and let's uh, break to Jim and let him read a, a commercial message for us. Sure. Thanks, Joan. Appraisers, if you've grown frustrated with endlessly pursuing new appraisal work and not reaping any of the benefits, Metro West is here to help. They understand and work to alleviate the pain points commonly felt by appraisers to enable personal and financial growth for their staff. After all, they've been owned and operated by appraisers since the company opened in 1987. Metro West Appraisal is an equal opportunity employer and they're always looking for certified residential real estate appraisers in their team. Visit metrowestappr.com slash careers or email careers at metrowestappr.com. Joan? Thank you, Jim. So Jeff, just you know, to share with the readers, uh, when we had our virtual valuation expo, we had as our keynote speaker, Kathy O'Neill, who's the author of uh, weapons of math destruction. And if you all haven't read that, for anybody who's a little nervous about AI and algorithms and, and how that impacts your world, you should read that book because she does tell that cautionary tale about the inherent bias in algorithms uh, uh, because human beings write algorithms. And we all have our own um, biases. So that's just baked into the cake. But one of the things that I think uh, appraisers ought to be cogniz cognizant of is machine learning involves human interaction with the machine. So appraisers aren't going away. They're not going to be replaced, are they? No, I, I actually think that appraisers are going to have a very prominent role in all of this because there's going to be more specialization out there. And what's a good way to put this? If you think about a doctor and, and, and the team of uh, assistants and all this stuff, they're the surgeon, right? They're the core. They're, they're the ones who know, can, who can do the reconciliation, who can do all the final stuff. They're also the ones who can take information coming from AI systems, coming from deep learning systems, and put that all together with their training and their experience to come out with a very, very good valuation. So uh, a lot of this is definitely going to be interactive. And I think this is what people have found was that in the beginning, there was a lot of talk about AI systems were going to replace people. Right. And what we found, uh, or the, actually the industry has found, that that didn't happen. 
because these systems, even though they were very good, they weren't that good. But when you combine them with humans, then they got really good. And I'm thinking about, I think uh, it was IBM that was trying to get uh, Watson to be board certified as a radiologist. And it was really good. But when you combined Watson with a doctor, with a real ra radiologist, now you got some really, really good results because it would, it would point out things that maybe they missed and the human could point out things that the, the system missed or the system was incorrect on. And so I think that's gonna be true for all of this. So definitely, um, and I, I think of it as deep learning, you're gonna get stuff coming back from these photos, from these videos, coming back to the appraiser about this property. The appraiser is gonna be sitting there at their desktop, uh, but it's almost like they're gonna be immersed in that property. This is where virtual reality, all these things start coming into play. And there's gonna be some really good decision-making but more importantly, it's going to speed everything up. Right? Yeah. Because the appraiser doesn't have to go out to the property, but they're going to be immersed in it. I have a very funny AI story that I need to share. So <clears throat> I had a new car and I was trying to sync my iPhone with my car. Uh, I was trying to play some music. And so after 10 frustrating minutes, I screamed at Siri and said, um, F you, Siri. And so what happened was CeeLo Green song, Forget You, which is also uh, the version that's not on the radio is F you, started playing. So Siri did hear me. <laughs> when I um, yelled an expletive at her and, uh, and then she worked. So I don't think that was by design, but anyway, that's, that, those are some of those funny, uh, it was almost human, right? That the machine responded that way. Well, let's talk a little bit. Wow. So some of the other trends over the last, gosh, I don't know how many months it's been, maybe 24 months on bifurcation and and hybrids. So what do you see going on there? What's been going on? What do you see going on in the in the future? Because I know that's a topic that appraisers are staying tuned into. Yeah, I, I think everybody has dropped the bifurcation word and now there's, it's hybrid. And the big difference is that now there's an appraiser involved in every step. So you have traditional, you have the, the hybrid and you have the desktop. And I think what been brought into the picture is that now you can have a virtual inspection. So you can have physical inspections by the appraiser or a third party, but now they introduced or they allowed the ability to have a virtual inspection. And that virtual inspection can be conducted by the appraiser or a third party. And when you, when you think about appraiser, is it the appraiser who's doing the report or is it an appraiser in the appraisal office. So it could be, you know, if they're gonna allow a, a third party, they need to allow trainees, they need to allow multiple appraisers, things like this. And this, and, and I think all this is good. And then the third one, of course, is just a desktop. But when you think about this a little bit and you look at that hybrid model and you say, I'm gonna do a virtual inspection and there, the description is you can do, a, you can do Skype or FaceTime or something like this, right, to get that, streaming image, a streaming video uh, from the home, it's like, who's gonna be at the other, other end holding the camera? Well, if you send somebody out there, you might as well just do a physical inspection, right? And so if it's not somebody you send out there, then who else is at the home? It's a homeowner. And so now you have a homeowner holding the camera probably being guided by the appraiser or a third party to capture this information. And so that homeowner starts to become part of the picture. And that's where you start to having the, the, you know, the trends of collaboration and specialization come into the picture. Because now you have this collaboration of third parties and the appraiser or teams in that appraisal office collaborating together, but not necessarily being together. They could be separate. And now you have also the homeowner being probably 
a person holding the camera for these virtual inspections on a guided tour by somebody who specializes in guiding people to capture property information. So the idea of you know, collaboration, specialization, teamwork, homeowner coming into the picture, it's all, you know, you have these now technology platforms that need to enable all of that to happen. And so you start to see things like Microsoft Teams and Slack and Dropbox and all these other platforms cater to collaboration. I think you'll start to see that also in the appraisal world as well, because that's, okay. that's where it's going, I think. All right. Well, let's uh, break one more time uh, to, to Jim. Thanks, John. In these uncertain times, you need a certain partner. You don't have to sacrifice top-notch coverage for an affordable premium. Intercorp has all the options and is sure to have just the right one to fit your specific needs. They provide the appraisal profession with competitive, best-in-class E&O coverage solutions nationwide. Having served the insurance needs of the industry for more than 25 years, Intercorp understands the risks you face every day. Whether you're an individual appraiser, appraisal firm, residential or commercial, or an AMC, visit intercorpinc.net to get a competitive quote today. Joan, back to you. Thank you, Jim. All right, Jeff, I've got one last question. It is sort of back on the uh, COVID topic. Do you see, you know, there's been a rather high volume of waivers, uh, I'm sure. Well, I don't know if appraisers are aware of how many because they've been so busy. It's not like it's in, impacted their volume at the moment. Uh, do you see the use of waivers as a uh, to continue at the same rate uh, post COVID? You know that's an interesting question. So there, I, you know, from my understanding, there's forty percent or so uh, waivers, and it's uh, mainly in the refi area. Uh, although in purchasing, also I think. And so, you know, how long will the refi boom last? So interest, I'm not sure when interest rates will go up, but to keep the economy going, they'll, they're going to stay down. But after a while, everybody's ref refinanced, right? But then you get into the area where uh, people who have not sold their home or homes because they, you know, with all the uncertainty with, with the virus. So now you're going to have this boom in home selling and just like with appraising today, there's, you know, there's not enough appraisers to handle the volume. And so when the, when the resellers or, you know, of, of homes start to, starts to take off, are there going to be enough um, appraisers to handle that? And so there may be waivers of uh, continuing for a while. I think the, the real, I think one of, one of the questions that needs to be answered is, let's say this is a year and a half from now, 18 months from now, will there be a technology change such that appraisers can do their valuations quicker so they can handle that upload in refinance and reselling? Uh, or are they still in the same mode where they're, everybody's having to do everything themselves and now you do need waivers to, to manage the workload? Um, so I, I don't know, it's, it's a really good question. Waivers, um, I think, are are keeping everybody from having these, you know, two month delays and those kind of things, like we saw in 2009, 2010. Uh, so they're a good little valve that you open up when things get really, really bad. And are they going to continue? I think a lot's going to depend on technology, uh, the timing, uh, things like that, because there's a, there's going to be a pent up demand to 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 move and sell homes, probably 18 months from now. Yeah, but I can, you know, sort of the counter ar argument to that is by having waivers, we're introducing a whole lot of risk into the system. And if I hear uh, one more person say that there's no risk with a waiver, I think I'm, I might get uh, physically aggressive <laughs> uh, because that's just the on the surface, that's the dumbest statement I've ever heard. Uh, my, my, my biggest concern with waivers too, or the other concern is uh, disparate treatment. Poor people don't get waivers and right. only rich people get waivers. 
And so if you're shrinking the pie and as an appraiser, all I'm getting left with are complex properties, guess what? The fees are gonna go up. Yep. And when the fees go up, who's paying that? The person who can least afford to. So at a minimum, I think those with perfect credit and plenty of cash ought to be helping to create a level playing field. And I think it is, um, gives them an unfair advantage. And uh, for that reason, uh, as well as just from a risk management, I am, am not a fan. It, it, and then thirdly, it means that uh, we're losing, we have a data leak all of that data that should be refreshing the database, it needs to be there. Otherwise, we're going to have a big gap in, in intelligence. And um, I don't think that's the right way to go. So, Yeah, I, I agree with you. And I think this is where uh, the virtual inspections, it's so easy on, on, a, on a waiver to just contact the homeowner and ask them to take some pictures of the interior and at least affirm that the house is there it's in decent condition, that there's truly three bedrooms and so forth. And that's easy to do. It's, it's a one hour deal, right? But they're not doing that. So yeah, something's better than nothing. I, I would yeah, agree. Exactly. I would agree with you. And uh, nothing is just opens the door for a lot of fraud and, and abuse. And with all the defaults that we're going to be hitting, you know, I don't know exactly when, but after the first of the year, at some point, the uh, forbearances are going to start looking are going to turn into defaults and we're going to see a replay of uh, another crisis. We don't know exactly what flavor it's going to be, but we do know it's going to be in the affordable housing sector. And yeah. so unless we find some new tricks, you know, here we go again. Totally agree with you, John. Yeah. Well, Jeff, so now let's, we did it again. We ended it on a depressing note. How did we do that? No, you know what, it's you know, all you know, your fault, Jeff. No, so, so the real ending note here is that there is a tremendous amount of opportunity here. And, and what we touched on was, here are some problems that need to be solved. Correct. And each of those problems has opportunities and they have multiple opportunities. And so people who are industrious, entrepreneurial, uh, they're gonna take advantage of this time. They're gonna take advantage of these opportunities. I, I actually think it's a great time to be an appraiser. I, I, I truly do. I do too. I think it's exciting. We've got lots of, lots of opportunities in, in front of us for sure. Well, Jeff, thank you very much for joining us today. And we will chat. My pleasure, My pleasure Jim. Thank you very much. You too, Jim. Thanks, Jeff. ProxyPix is the first of its kind on-demand system for getting the location-specific media you need from wherever you are. Their simple to use platform creates an online marketplace matching people needing property photos with proxies or data collectors near the requested location. Through crowdsourcing, you can get current up-to-date photos of anything on the map within hours, if not minutes. Never before has it been quicker, simpler, or more economical to get the property photos you need. Sign up at proxypix.com or download the ProxyPix app available on the Apple and Google Play Store. Well, thank you, Jeff and Joan, so much for today's uh, Buzzcast. It was really interesting figuring out how the industry is going to change uh, going forward. You know, anybody who's listening to this, be sure to subscribe and get the latest update as soon as we publish. Thanks and have a great day.